and welcome to my channel. My name is Sarah, I am the Clumsy Stitcher here on YouTube and over on Instagram. If this is your first time here, thank you very much for coming and taking the time to sit with me for a little while. This is a channel all about cross stitch, so I just show updates on my current projects and anything I've started, anything I may have bought in the last month or so. For those of you who are returning, thank you very much for coming back, I hope you enjoy. So suddenly here we are again at the end of another month. I am still not quite sure how this year is going so quickly, um, but there we go. It has been a very busy month, if I'm being honest with you. Work is pretty hectic at the moment, so I'm working quite long hours. Um, my partner and I are also getting married in July, so wedding planning has kind of been at the forefront again, trying to get everything sorted. We were one of the couples that had to postpone their wedding because of COVID. And so for a year, we postponed it last summer and we were basically living in denial that it was actually ever going to happen. And now a couple of anxiety dreams later, we're here trying to get everything sorted in like three months. So we're planning the, um, the restrictions in the UK are supposed to end on the 21st of June. So we're just sitting here hoping that everything continues as planned and we can have the wedding as we planned originally. Although obviously if, if we if we can't have the original plans then that's absolutely fine, we'll still get married that weekend. Um, but we just need to make sure we're ready for every eventuality basically. So it is planning central, um, trying to get everything sorted. It does mean, unfortunately, my sewing has taken a little bit of a hit. Um, I feel like up until this point I've essentially done a mini whip parade every time we've sat down together um, because I've always been able to work on quite a variety of projects. Uh, this is not the case this month. Um, it was really, it was a bit weird actually because I was feeling almost guilty that I didn't have very much to show you and then I was feeling guilty that I was feeling guilty because this is supposed to be a hobby that I do in my spare time just to chill out a bit and uh, distract myself from, um, uh, distract myself in the evenings basically. Um, and so I'm not going to I'm not going to feel guilty. I hope you're happy to see whatever progress I have. Um, I have had a thought as well on how I'm going to structure this video because last video I spoke a little bit about mania. Uh, obviously May is now. So I thought what I would do is show you my current progress on what I've done this month. So I've got two works in progress and one new start. And then speak to you about my plans for May because it will be a bit different. And as part of that, I thought I could show you how I start a project. I'm not sure how that's going to go because I've never done any... The only filming I've ever done is me just staring at the camera. So I, I don't know how it will work with me demonstrating things. I just have a small tablet and you basically you're balanced on a coffee table right now. Like I have a very basic <laughs> setup. Um, so hopefully I'll be able to get some shots either on the tablet or on my phone and piece it together so that it ends up being a good video for you. I thought it might be a bit interesting. I personally love watching Stitch With Me's or um, Plan With Me's and when pe especially when people like kit up their projects. I really love those kinds of videos. So I just thought I'd show you how I do it as well. I thought it might also be a bit useful for those of you who are newer to cross stitching and are just interested in seeing uh, how to set up a project as well. But we'll see how it goes. <laughs> so I am just going to get started straight away on my works in progress. The first one I'm going to show you is my terror stitch pattern, which I started last video. I'll put up a picture here as usual, just to show you what it will look like when it's finished. Um, the last time I showed you, I think I'd got about halfway through the top um, segment and it is still on the hoop because I have quite a lot of loose linen. So let me bear with you one second. This is what we have now. So I finished the whole top half. Excuse that little fluffy bit of fabric. So I'm really loving the colour palette for this one. I have realised actually, so in all of my cross stitching, there is cat hair because we have two cats and obviously hair gets everywhere. This is the first colour palette where it really shows up, like when there's a cat hair stuck, especially in this really pale. So I'm having to be quite careful about picking those out, which is uh, which is new. Um, this is a lot more stitching than I thought it was actually. Um, I thought, because I'd done half, like I'd done this chunk 
here and then a bit up here. And I just thought, oh yeah, I'll just finish that off very quickly. It won't take long. And it just took me hours and I wasn't expecting it at all. This is stitched on a 40 count Zweigart Newcastle linen, just in white with the called for DMC as per the pattern. I'm just stitching one over two. Quite enjoy, this is the first 40 count I've done. And I am quite enjoying it, although I'm a little bit worried about the the coverage, but actually on the camera, it looks fine. Um, I think when you're a bit further away, it's when you're up close and stitch, you want it that you can pick folks it a lot more easily, I think. <laughs> so that's that one. Really enjoying that one still. The next one I have to show you is my Hello Pumpkin, which is still being housed in my little project bag. I have the picture here. So I got this as a kit from Caterpillar Cross Stitch. And last time I showed it to you, I think we had the owl and some of the tree trunk, I think. So here we go. So as you can see, I've got the rest of the tree. I've got the two pumpkins and the mushroom at the bottom with the grass. This is the one I'm doing the stitch along with, hosted by Joe at Belushi Stitches and Emma, who is M at Emma X Stitching. Um, the, the hashtag is hello pumpkin, what time do you cal this? And we've got a couple of chats on the go and it's been really great seeing everyone's progress as well. Zoom in on that owl because I really love him. The colours are just, oh, the exposure's gone, there we go. The colours are just so vibrant. I love these pumpkins so much. Really, really, really enjoying this one. So the first part of the stitch along was the grass along here and then some of the leaves on the bottom. But because I'd already started before the stitch along started, I started with the owl kind of straight away. Um, and so I'd started kind of doing the motifs around him. Um, but there, he's the second part. So I think the second part like comes up and around here. So I'm excited to get back to work on that. It was a bit hard actually kind of controlling myself to not keep going, which I think is quite good actually, because um, otherwise I would just rush through it and get it done too quickly and then, uh, then be sad that I'd got it done. Um, yeah, so looking forward to getting back on that one. It should also be no surprise to anyone that my new start is Hello Petal, another caterpillar cross stitch tree. I showed this in my last video as part of my haul. And when I say um, it was really hard not to continue with Hello Pumpkin, Hello Petal obviously had to jump out and get started. Um, with this one, there's a hashtag hello petal sal um because C caterpillar cross stitch haven't released this one as a stitch along kind of officially with them it's just one that a lot of people are doing uh on instagram it's good to join in i love i always love look i just love clicking through the hashtags and seeing other people's progress i've um i've decided to go in the same almost practically the same order as i am with my hello pumpkin because i can almost because then because i want to be able to get them done around the same time i don't want one lagging so I've started in the middle again and instead of the owl there's a daffodil basically and then I've come down to do the rest of the tree. So this is a much more pastel colour scheme although still obviously the daff with the daffodils and the, um, the chicks and everything is still quite bright. Um, I just love the. I just really do love these trees. I can't wait to have them all displayed. I think I will switch them out seasonally. So I'm still deciding how I want to display them. Um, Evelyn, uh, Evelyn across the pond, she has displayed hers on an easel with this pom-pom trim around it, which looks really great. And so I love the idea of that. Although we, we just haven't got very much surface space. Um, so I'm thinking about potentially doing a wall hanging instead. Because I can roll them up and store them maybe a bit easier. I don't know. We'll just have to see. That's future Sarah's problem. <laughs> so 
So that's my progress. And that is all I have to share for my uh, whips this month. So uh, the, I don't know if I've just been focusing on these three or they've just jumped out at me when I've been coming to stitch because it has been, it hasn't, I haven't been able to get big chunks of stitching done. They're quite good projects to pick up and put down, like the trees, for example. They've got so many little motifs where you can just do like three or four and feel like you've had a good time sewing. Whereas, for example, on my big dragon, if I can only get 50 stitches done, it still doesn't feel like very much. So they have been they have been quite good to stitch on this, this month. What I will show you very quickly is some more haul. Last month, I bought a lot of fabric to make my project bags. I bought a few pa patterns I wasn't expecting to. And to go with the patterns and to go with the project bags, I obviously needed to get the needle minders ready for when I, when I actually start them. <laughs> So I was just going to show you, because I've really enjoyed, I've been using them actually on the projects I've just shown you. I think they're really pretty and they're really strong. So I just thought I'd show you the ones I'd got very quickly. The first one is the one I'm using on Hello Pumpkin, because it's nice and autumnal. Little squirrel, which I just think is very cute. This one is from Just So Heavenly on Etsy. I think it's absolutely adorable. Um, the other one I got from Just So Heavenly is this. And obviously we've got cats and I love to read. So this one was a very easy purchase, if I'm honest with you. <laughs> the one I'm using on my Hello Petal is a little spring flower. Ooh, check it. I really, really like this one. It's just so simple and so pretty. All of the magnets on these are really strong as well, so I've not had any issues. And the last one is going to go with my Mania plans, which we will chat about in a second. And this is my Celtic cross. It just felt right being Cornish. I needed to have a Celtic one as well. So that's all my haul. I've actually been quite controlled in the grand scheme of things. Um, I've seen there have been a couple of patterns where I've just been staring at them on Instagram now for so long. Um, one of them is the Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery. They're currently doing a mystery stitch along the Cozy Cafe and they've released part one, uh, which was like this raspberry mocha and this little panda cup. And I just thought it was so adorable. And they recently released part two which was a matcha and it had all these cherry blossoms on and it just looked so good that I was I was just so tempted. So I've been trying to really control myself there. Um, I just, I'm just trying not to buy too much at the moment, if I'm honest. And then the other one I would been, I've been looking at the, I've been looking at two, these two for ages actually. And I'll do, I will pop them up because I think they're really, really good is Leela's studio on Etsy. She has a Halloween Quaker and a Christmas Quaker. And I just love both of them. I've never thought I would, I've never thought I'm much of a sampler Quakery, like traditional Quaker person, but I just love the detail in these motifs for these two designs I think is absolutely fantastic. And I know it is just a matter of time until I get them. I'm just trying to delay the inevitable, I think. <laughs> So we'll see. Um, maybe there'll be in my haul in this summer. I don't know. I'll have to see how the next couple of months go mentally. And I think that will basically determine whether or not I end up with them. But that is my April wrap up done. So now I'm going to chat with you about my May plans. So for those of you who don't know, Mania is where you start a new project every single day in May. And I've always loved watching Mania videos. I find them so interesting. You get loads of inspiration. You see loads of different types of fabric, of thread types, of patterns that you maybe wouldn't have seen simply because of the sheer volume of projects that are started. Um, I did wonder about doing that, but then there's, I don't even, I don't think I'm gonna be able to stitch every single day in May, so I wouldn't be able to really do it anyway. I'm just also not organised enough for that. I don't have enough stash. I don't have enough project bags. I don't have enough of anything. <laughs> so I would never have been able to do the 31 starts. 
um, back in March time, I was debating whether or not to just do a new start every three days or so. So I get 10 new starts over the course of the month. Um, but then my whip count is currently around 10. And I just think if I had 10 more starts, I don't know, I just wouldn't be able to finish anything ever. 10 is good enough for me at the moment because I've got, I feel like I've got quite a good variety of the projects that I'm doing, like the bit of monochrome, my full coverage, um, my kind of more cutesy pieces. So I've settled on doing monogamania. I'm still not quite sure how to spell that. So I've been looking at hashtags and I think I found the right way. I don't know. So I'm going to just leave that across the screen. Um, essentially for monogamania, you only stitch on one piece for a whole month. So it is still a little bit of a challenge because obviously I'm used to stitching on three, four, five pieces a month. So it would be really good to focus on just the one. And in my previous video, I was talking about focusing on my dragon because I wanted to get some quite good progress. But as with most floss tubers, anything that you say out loud just goes out the window as soon as you post a video about it. What I have decided to do instead is I'm, so I'll still do monogamania, but I will still get a new start. So I want to, because I've wanted to work on this for ages anyway, and I thought no better time than May. So I'm going to work on my Dimensions Kit Cabin Fever. I've wanted this kit for quite a while and I bought it with some Christmas money. And I thought that now would be the perfect time, perfect time to start it. I have the Aurora Cabin currently hanging and this just feels like a perfect partner piece. So really excited to start this. And I thought what we could do is use this kit, like open it together and go through the contents of it. And so that if anyone is interested in like dimensions kits at all, you can see what comes in the kits and then just go through how I, how I start it basically. So I've got my needle minder ready, as I showed you earlier. I've also made a new project bag for this kit, which I will show you now because I'm quite pleased with it. This felt nice and summery. And so again, it's the same as before. So you have the same fabric on the back, but then when you open up the zip, it's the lining fabric's different. So yeah, really pleased with how this came out. This is a stitch marker that came with my Celtic Cross Needle Minder. Um, so until I start doing something that requires a stitch marker, I was just going to use it as a tag on my um, on my project bag. So what I'm going to do now is flip the camera around and open up the dimensions kit to show you what you get in the kit and what I do with it, basically. Right. So this is the kit. I'm just going to open it up quickly. So it's my first time ever doing this, so I really hope this goes okay. Um, right, let's try and take this out. What I'll do quickly first is just show you a copy of it without any glare. It's looking a bit darker than it is, but um, that's the general vibe. Sorry, I'll notice it looks a bit different from just a second ago. I just had to take everything out and make sure I hide everything as I thought I did. So the first thing you'll see is you get all of your threads. All of the threads you'll need for the kit. You'll see it comes on these thread cards. And they list the number of skeins that they have um, of each colour. It's a gorgeous colour palette as well. I, I don't know if that's showing up properly, but it is really pretty. Um, I'll just pop them down. You get as well, when there's lots of, because um, there's lots of these colours, they don't obviously all fit on the thread cards. So they just provide them in bundles. You get your piece of Ada. So this is just 18 count ivory Ada. They don't specify a brand, but it's just a, kind of looks like a standard block bit crispy. You get 
Oh, in this pack I got three needles. And then you get just your, these are instructions and they also have the, the chart in the inside. So I've got my threads all de-knotted and I've just kind of twizzled them round and left them as they are for now. With the threads itself, before when I was doing my Aurora Cabin, I just hole punched. So you can see here, they've got like the colors. Um, so I just hole punched along the top and I used that to store all of my uh, threads and I would just kind of trim them off and use them as needed. But if you've seen any of my previous videos, you'll probably will have heard me speaking about Annie's Keepers which are these. I had a few spare from my um, my last haul. So I'm going to use as many of these as possible. Sorry, I had to pause again. There was some wedding admin phone call stuff to suddenly take care of. And as you can see, we've now been joined by the cat again. Um, so yeah, I'll sort out my thread separately. And then what I do, because you just receive kind of a piece of standard ADA and you can see here it's already fraying so what I normally do is because it's quite creased because it's obviously been folded for a long time as well I will iron the fabric and then with my sewing machine I always go around the edge and just um, like do a zigzag stitch around to prevent any further fraying um, if you don't have a, a sewing machine I think I think there is a service offered in some shops where they will surge the edges for you, or I feel I do feel like I've read that somewhere, um, but it might just be worth looking into if um, if you've not got the machine uh, to do it yourself. So if you bear with me two seconds, I'm just gonna iron this, and then I will crack up my sewing machine and I'll show you what I do. So this is my sewing machine. It's a Brother Star one, if you're interested. It's my mum's old one, um, she very kindly gifted this to me when she got herself a new one. This is my, the fabric all ironed. You can see there are still some lines in there. Um, I'm not too worried about the kind of, if there's residual lines, because I need to fold the, I aided to put it in the project bag anyway. It was more just making sure that the bigger dents were out. Um, if I just turn my machine very quickly, I can show you more easily yes yeah, so this is the stitch I'm using it's the zigzag stitch and it just makes sure that you get a good overlocking edge on your fabric I will I you want the stitches to be quite wide so I've just changed the setting to make it a bit wider and frequent just to make sure that there are no stray strands that will separate and fray um, I will mute this because it will end up being quite loud so bear with me and if you, um, I was going to say, I wasn't going to actually kind of show you how to use a sewing machine because I know for a fact that there are much better tutorials than I could ever do. Um, so I would just recommend um, searching on YouTube specifically for kind of zigzag tutorials and um, searching a fabric and that kind of thing. So that is our fabric prepared. I don't know if it's going to show up that well on here. Well, it keeps trying to focus, but not quite. So yeah, just with the zigzag stitch, stitch around the outside. Sorry for the brief interlude there. My bobbin ran out of thread and I didn't realise. So if there was any repeating footage, that, that's what that was. Um, fantastic. So now the fabric is prepared. I'm just going to put that over there again. I'm just going to put this away and then I'll come back and show you how I actually then start. 
So I've traded my sewing machine out for my lap stand. This is a Nerge stand, which I will link down below. I have found this incredibly helpful. We don't have the space really for a floor stand. Um, and this has been really great helping me sew two-handed. Um, so what we want to do now is we've got our prepared fabric and we just ironed and pressed and made it all lovely. Um, what we want to do is find the middle of the fabric. And the way I do that is, so you get it in, sorry, you get it in half. And then half again. And you don't want to fold down all of the sides. You just want to make sure that you're definitely folding it in half. And then I just pinch, pinch the middle so that when you unfold it, you should have, I don't know if you'll be able to see clearly, this, yeah, right here, there's a mark where you can see the middle. And then if you want, what you can do here is just get a small piece of thread and just do a little loop start in the middle. And all I'm going to do is where you can see the middle dent is just put my needle up down and then um, just loop it round so that it makes a little knot there and then I'm just going to do this I'm going to go I'm oh, sorry up down and then just leave it as it is so I know now that that is the middle of my fabric. And then if I wanted, I could just double check. I could fold in half and half again and just make sure that that was sitting in the middle. And so now I'm going to get my hoop. It's just a standard hoop. It was a gift, I'm afraid, so I'm not quite sure of the brand. Just put my one on the top, one underneath. There you go. And I just want like to make sure that that's really tight. And I'll bring my stand back in again, so that's in frame. Pop my hoop on and just tighten the screw on the top. Brilliant. So you can see my middle marker there. This is the line which I tried to iron out. And so now obviously I can't show, I can't have the design on screen because it's paid for products and copywriting and everything like that. So what you want to do then is look at your pattern. You can find the middle by looking at, they've got arrows across the top and down the side, which identify the middle of each side. And you just want to find out where they meet in the center. This is if you're a middle starter. If not, um, then you just need to measure the size of the stitching compared to the size of your fabric and then you just start from whichever corner you want to basically. Um, I am typically a middle stitcher except for my parrot where I did start in the middle and then went out to the left um, and obviously my long dog sampler started from the left corner but for these I like to start in the middle because that's a bit of where the it's where the cabin is and I just want to start quite near there. So I've selected where I'm going to start with and on this kit in particular, there's lots of blended colours and there's lots of half stitches in really chunky colours. So I've decided to start just with a basic one block colour, full cross stitch. Um, just it's, e it's easier to show you and it's also it's a good place to start, I think. So I've got my thread here. I've got it on my Annie's Keeper. So all I'm doing is... Pulling out a thread and then just pulling it from there, just brushing out my thread so it doesn't get too knotted when I keep using it like that. 
So the stitch I'm starting with is a little bit off center um, just because I chose to start with a single color. Um, so I need to count 10 stitches to the right of center and six stitches down. So this is the middle here, which we've identified with the thread. So I'm just going to count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And then I'm just going to put my needle in. The way I start, when you have, um, when you have a, a loop at the end, the way I start is, and this is something I've learned from floss tube, <laughs> is I go in the top, pull down, come up, go through the loop, pull tight, and then if you go straight back down the hole you've just come up from, it just pulls it through and then it pulls the knot through as well. So now, and because this is just one long pole, this is the light, I believe, on the edge of the cabin. It's just one row of single cross, single crosses up. So I'm just gonna do them. Oh, and there we go, there's our first issue. I've caught the thread that I've sewn the middle with. So I'm just gonna pull that through and then what I'll do, I'll get my needle minder now that we're sorted. And what I can do now is just unpick where we've put our middle in because we've made our first cross stitch now. We don't need to keep the, um, the middle stitches in because we know how to identify it. There we go. And so now I can just Keep going up. Brilliant. So this is my May's first start. <laughs> what I'm going to do now is just pop this to one side. I'm going to turn the camera around and just uh, have a quick sign off. <laughs> so I had to change my phone to record this last bit just because my tablet died um, as I was packing up my um, sewing. Um, I just wanted to say I hope you found that useful. I hope I've been able to put that together into a format that is helpful. If you have any questions, please let me know. Um, but thank you very much for joining me in my mania start um i will be very very honest with you i've had to film this a couple of days before may um because I, I just don't have time uh, this weekend unfortunately so it means i have got seven stitches in ahead of the first of may but i hope you won't hold that against me uh, i'm still counting it as a when i stitch it on the first of may that being my proper start because it means I can actually sit down with my pattern and get into it properly and not panic about where my where my hands are and what's showing on the camera. Before I go for good I just wanted to mention a couple of floss tubers I've been watching recently. I'm still quite behind on all my floss tube and um, that there are a couple of people that I've been able to catch up on uh, more recently. The first of those is somebody who will be well known to all of you, I'm sure, and that is Julie, who is a Kansas City girl in a Colorado world. I've watched her for ages. I absolutely love the project she works on. One of her most recent videos, she showed the um, Little Nas X tribute piece, um, which I just thought was so fantastic. I thought the designer who did that was brilliant and her version of it was fantastic. I also love the colour choices she's made for the Fruits of Plenty stitch along, which is the design by Jacob at Modern Folk Embroidery. I've been looking at so many versions of that design because, again, it's one of the ones I am really tempted by. And I really love the fabric and thread that she's chosen for that. I think it just looks fantastic. Someone else I've watched a little bit of is Kaylee. I think her 
pieces are really lovely and she also does stitch with me's which I really love watching um, and kind of inspired me to do the little bit I did today uh, kind of a start with me theme so thank you very much Kaylee. I uh, I really love your channel other than that I think that is everything from me like I say I really hope that the start with me has worked out okay um if you do have any questions whatsoever, please just let me know or any hints, even if there's something you think I could be doing better then absolutely let me know. I, um, I've learned so much just from watching Floss Tube and I, uh, would, uh, yeah, I'd love to hear your wisdom and your knowledge. So please just let me know. Actually on that topic, I just want to say a huge thank you to those of you who commented on my previous video when I was talking about how I wasn't able to cut fabric straight. Um, there are a few people commented what I could try, um, the main ones being getting proper embroidery fabric scissors, rotary blade and a cutting mat, and a proper quilting ruler. So my first trip out, now that the shops are open, was actually to my the craft shop near nearest me, um, which is where I got my fabric for my May project bag from. And I picked up a rotary cutter and a cutting mat and a ruler and some scissors. So that has helped a massive amount. So thank you so much to everybody who helped me with that. I really appreciate it. I hope you all have a fantastic May. I hope you watch lots of Mania videos. I am so looking forward to seeing everyone's projects and new starts and whips because I know a lot of people bring out specific works in progress during May as well. So I am really excited to see what everyone works on this month. I will catch up with you at the end of the month. It will be a very short video because I'll have only been working on the one project, but I hope you'll like to, you'll hope you'll be excited to see my progress anyway. Um, if you've enjoyed this, start with me, please let me know and I'll see if I can potentially do a stitch with me segment in the next one. Uh, just let me know if that's something that you'd be interested in. Otherwise, have a fantastic month and I will catch up with you in a few weeks. Bye.